Well, what's the state of play with the name now? I mean, it's uh, it's the birthday party you've been establishing overseas, but uh, it's still the boys next door, sort of in subtitles here. Is that is that something you're going to keep or? or well, uh, I personally, I would have liked to have uh, omitted the subtitles. I, I don't think it's really necessary for a start, and uh, and it, it just it's just confusing and prolongs the sort of uh, confusion. One of the things I suppose uh, I'd be interested in talking about is uh, what's been released over in England as the, the single, with the three track single which came out here on 4AD, has that been released over there? Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, well, that was our second uh, London single, the first one was Mr Clarinet, which, which we put out ourselves. The way we did it was to go over there uh, unknown, uh, release uh, a single entirely by ourselves and hopefully it would um, incite a bit of interest, which it did. and. We got we did a one-off record deal with 4AD, which were our terms, and uh, that's the, that's our second one. And, and now we're back here to record an album. And mm. uh, 4AD, the same company, are very interested in it, and they seem to do a good job with the last one. So uh, we'll, we'll probably they'll, they'll probably release it unless someone. Mm. What was the sort of interest in the singles? The Friend Catcher single came in at number three at the in the enemy alternative charts, which was, surprised me no end. But then again, in the sounds charts, it came in at about number 31, uh, which seems to be a little uh, confusing. Yeah, but it was at uh, the four uh, the man from 4AD uh, was you know, very surprised at the amount it sold. Uh, all, all the, the the success we had there was generally due to our records as opposed to the live thing. Uh, the success of the Friend Catcher single, I would imagine, was largely based on John Peel uh, playing it continuously, almost to the point of people criticising him. That the, the Peel shows, I'm not sure they they have an uh, they have a uh, massive sort of listening crowd to them, so they are a real lot of help. And anyone, I think, anyone who generally listens to of new music generally listens to John Peel. I'm mm. not sure, but uh, yeah, that seems to be the case. I mean, I, I noticed that uh, when uh, Small Wonder sort of decided to pretty much go out of business as a record mm. label, they said well, one of the reasons is if you know if it's this unfortunate situation, if Peel doesn't play your record, it's not going to sell because no one's yeah. going to hear it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it's rather a, a difficult position for him to be in. But uh, when he picks someone up and sort of champions them, well. It, you know, it really uh, does help and yeah. seems to have helped in you, go uh, you guys' case. Yes, he was very kind. I don't know whether he tends to kind of um, help, deliberately help the underdog or uh, whether, you know, he, he, he played uh, other Australian stuff too, I hear. Let's talk about England. Obviously one of the, the, um, the impetus for going over there is that you felt that your music would be, um, you know, quite acceptable to what's going on there. And so I just wonder, when you got there, how you felt about that, how you saw yourselves fitting in? It took about three months or so to, um, we went through a bit of a shock when we got there and it took about three months or, or even maybe four to get um, any confidence back. Our initial um, performances were fairly sort of um, entirely unsatisfactory. Um, but by the end of it they'd uh, improved a lot and we'd gotten back and uh, into the run of things and then we came back home unfortunately. Although yeah. like generally I found the groups over, th uh, over their live very disappointing in their uh, performance and attitude towards sort of playing live, they were very unexciting as a whole, but there was a very small uh, few that were good. Mm, well, it strikes me one of the, the things about England is that their, you know, bands don't get to play a real lot. You know, there's, there's it, well, well, the thing is, yes, that they just don't want to. In the English are such a lazy nation that, that they choose to play once every month or once every two months, and we were used to playing it three times a week or at least twice a week. And, and I, like, I really felt like I just wasn't in the group at all most of the time because. Uh, you would spend, like we played about ten times for the whole time we were there. And but it is, uh, at the same time, it is very difficult uh, to get gigs there, particularly uh, when you are, you, um, initially we had to go around to the different uh, places, uh, just to the venues and say we'd like to play there and, um, you know, first of all they'd never heard us um, and, and secondly 
uh, we were Australian and both of those things really worked against us. The rock gardens uh, uh, helped us quite a bit and we played there and after you know that got around then uh, we got a lot more gigs after that. Mm. <coughs> was that basically the, your, your mode of operation, you just had to go along in front of them and say look this is our records and stuff? Uh, yeah. yeah, that's what everyone does, you just have to send them a tape or a record and um, if they like it they'll put you on basically. It's except we had no one behind us, I mean uh, most groups uh, I was, yeah, most groups who who go to London from Australia have uh, a record company behind them and they stay in hotels and they wait for their, uh, the people who are uh, working for them to do all that sort of thing. Well, they have a tour lined up before they go, whereas... Uh, and we just had to go around with uh, a tape or a, a record in our hand and sort of do it in that fashion. Mm. Uh, I, think, I think the thing that helped us the most, perhaps, uh, I'm not sure, was that... Uh, that groups themselves heard us and uh, or heard singles or heard Peel players and so forth and helped us a lot in that respect. Um, it, was, it was a matter of um, gaining respect from uh, papers and so forth first and then um, getting to play as opposed to doing big gigs which, we, you know, which didn't really happen. Mm. How did you go about organising things like um, you know, sound and crew and stuff like that. And we didn't. We did it ourselves. We, oh, we, 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 we did a have group yeah. called the Fridges, who um, kindly lent us their amplifiers and put them on the stage for us, and things like that, um, which was very nice of them. But the problem with our live performances was that there was uh, a long, uh, such a long gap in between each performance that. That there was that we couldn't kind of keep the thing rolling. There's no momentum whatsoever. And so we had to, we kind of had um, nerves all over again type of thing. If we had been playing twice a week after about two weeks, you know, we would have felt fine about it. Yeah, did you have any conception of that when you went over there or before you went over there, that that's what it was going to be like? Or? I had no conception of any anything in London before I went there. You know, I just didn't know what to expect. Mm. Have you written much stuff over the last, or uh, well, since you've been away? Well, yes and no. Uh, we've, um, I personally haven't had anything to write on. I write all my songs on the piano. Live stuff, um, we've written, you know, enough. Um, I have written some other stuff for the record, but uh, that's, that would be played live. Mm -hmm. um, but it's interesting, uh, uh, well, as, as soon as I've, I've gotten, it's probably not very interesting at all actually, but as soon, <laughs> as, soon as I've gotten back here uh, with my old piano, I've uh, been able to write a lot better and a lot quicker. And what about the provinces? I mean, did you try sort of any of the other the other major centres about as far as trying to work there? No. No, not really. It's really... Well, uh, the uh, things were um, difficult enough. Uh, we, we weren't really out, out to make money. Uh, in London, it was just to kind of um, uh, make ourselves known uh, enough so that when we came back up with an album, things would be a lot easier, which I'm sure they will. I mean, we'll only be in London for about three months. We're leaving in ten weeks. We'll be in London for about three months, hopefully, then we're touring Europe and America. Uh, the guy from 4AD has already, uh, you know, he's, he said he'll have all that underway, which you know, so things I hope will be a lot easier this time around. Mm. When well, do you start recording on the album? <coughs> Christmas around. We're not really sure yet. But we're, we're doing this tour and we're going to record the album. Mm. Do you know sort of the, where you're going to record it and all that yeah, sort of stuff? We're tossing up at the moment. Mm. I, hopefully it's at Armstrong. We have some time at Armstrong, but we're going to have to use another studio as well. Mm. What about production stuff? Who's going to handle that? Are you going to do we it as well? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Had enough. And producers in Australia. Right. Well, 